Hey everybody, uh, welcome to the uh, review of the mental game for this week. So I'll quickly share my screen. Uh, the first thing that I want to draw everybody's attention to uh, is this document. So as I said on my message, this is going to be the final review uh, of the year uh, because on Monday, we're going to have a test. Uh, and we're going to have a test on everything that you're about to see in this booklet. And I've sent this booklet out uh, through TMAP so you can review. Uh, and again, I must stress the test is not a test of the student. It's a test of my coaching to see where the knowledge gaps are so we can address these uh, in the session. Uh, but ultimately, this is everything that we've covered so far. So the super chicken session. Number two, PCDEs. Number three, overcoming adversity. Chapter four, goal setting. Uh, chapter five, long-term goal setting. Chapter six, the happiness advantage. Chapter seven, pre-shot routine and Osphere. Chapter eight, that was last week, the inverted U um, and activation awareness and control. And then chapter nine, Effective golf practice. So that's the one we're going to review today. And then chapter 10, this is additional information for a select few uh, students um, on a little bit of science about how the golf swing is actually a variable, variable movement. The best players have variation leading into the golf ball. Um, so we're going to go through that with just a few players, not, not the whole academy. And then chapter 11, just a little bit of a, a motivational pep talk about how we're going to use this information to lay a great foundation for the rest of the year and the outdoor coaching uh, at core. Um, and then here we go. You can see the multiple choice exam and then some short essay questions as well. Um, so that is available uh, for everybody via that TMAP link, um, a really nice resource. We're going to have it put up on the website as well. Uh, so people can download it. But that's a review of the whole of um, this season's indoor mental training. Should lay a great foundation for coaches and students to be able to communicate on a very high level. And ultimately, this knowledge will start to see it being applied in practice, eventually being applied on the golf course, resulting in better behaviors, stronger mindset. Uh, a happier, uh, higher performing junior golfer, hopefully would be the outcome. Um, so that's that. And then the final session of the year, uh, we're going to have a little party. I think the students have done great. I'm very committed to the topics, very engaged in the session. Uh, I think when I first came to core three years ago, it would have been very hard to deliver these sessions with the attention uh, that the students uh, have provided. So credit to them. So I just want to say thank you. Have a little pizza party in the uh, in the final week. Um, open conversations about anything to do with the mental game in a very relaxed environment uh, and, and just chill out and say well done uh, to the students. After that pizza party, the students will get their orange book. They'll have access to all the blogs. They'll have access to this ebook, which also has these video sessions embedded in. And then they'll be good to go and should have every resource um, that we can that we've provided over the winter in a nice written uh, or video form. Um, OK, so I'm going to share my screen again. Let's dive into the session that we just had. Let's dive into effective practice. So we kicked off the session with this question. Do you see a problem in this video? And if you do. What is the potential solution? Thank 
So a really cool video that opened up uh, communication with myself and the students on how golf is generally not a very well-practiced sport. If you want to get better at skateboarding in the X Games, you practice on the skateboard ramp. If you want to get better at being a fighter pilot, you get into the plane and you fly the plane. If you want to get better at being a basketballer, you practice on the basketball court. If you want to get better at being a soccer player, you practice on the soccer field. If you want to get better at being a golfer, you go to the range. <laughs> and uh, just so everyone's aware, the golf range was not invented uh, by an expert in learning. The golf range was invented for convenience. It can be very hard to get on the golf course. It can be very time consuming to get on the golf course. So the golf range was invented for convenience. Um, and what we have to do we have to get innovative and creative, and we have to understand the science of learning if, as players and as coaches, we're going to help uh, golfers reach their full potential. So I'm going to share my screen again here. Play. Slide. So before I dive into that, uh, actually, I'll dive into that right now. We can skip through that. So based on what I've just said, we can see here, here's the golf range, not invented by a learning expert, invented by people for convenience. Where can we go and hit balls where we don't have to spend three, four, five hours? Where can we not have to walk? Um, where can we get more reps in? Okay, let's build somewhere like core golf. Now, the problem is there's a disconnect. Because this area lacks what we would call contextual interference. The golf range is very safe. It's very reductionistic. There's no variability in the lie. Um, the conditions are a little bit more consistent than they would be on a golf course. And we can see on this other side, just here, this picture has a lot more chaos, a lot more environmental impacts, a lot more um different factors that a golfer is going to have to deal with. So often the skills that we build on the range do not transfer to the golf course, but uh, that's not so at core golf um, because we are well-versed and well-educated and we understand the coaches. We all understand the science of skill retention. That's holding a skill over a period of time and transferring it into other environments. So we can make changes through the core style of practices to close this gap. The students were taught the three key factors. Spacing, this is time between shot. The time between the shot is critical. If you are just raking a ball, hit, rake a ball, hit, rake a ball, hit, there's very little time between each shot. And all you are doing is getting hold of a feeling and keeping it. And if you want to retain skills and transfer them into multiple environments, you actually have to do the opposite. You have to lose the feeling and learn to recall it. So at core, we want our students to have more space between each shot. It's not about the volume of shots. It's about the engagement in the task, the engagement in the shot, the total process of hitting that shot. So we're suggesting that 20 balls should last about 20 minutes. The student will be fully, fully engaged. The volume will be less, but the skill retention and skill transfer 
will be more. Variability, variability is changing in tasks. So if you think 20 balls in 20 minutes, maybe every five balls you change task. So the first five balls that are going to last you five minutes, maybe you're hitting a seven iron, trying to hit a draw to a target. After those five balls, maybe you change to a wedge and you're trying to hit a low flighted wedge and land it within a certain distance of the pin. Then after those five balls, you go back to the original task. Now your brain is like, what was I doing five minutes ago? It has to search through its working memory. And that's how we learn. Rep after rep after rep is not a formula for skill retention or skill transfer. It's a formula for getting hold of a feeling and keeping it. That in tournaments is not going to stand up because in a golf tournament, there's probably three, four, five minutes between each shot. The more space we have between each ball, the more variability we have, the more challenging the practice. And we can also make practice challenging by creating games where we play against someone else, by creating games where we're chasing our, our personal best or our best score. And this is a great way um, of keeping practice engaging and challenging for students. So three critical things that we do on the core range to close that gap and help skill retention and skill transfer. We add space between each shot. We create variability by changing the tasks and we make practice more challenging than if we're just going to hit ball after ball after ball. Um, to help students with this, we have a manual. So core golf grinding games, this is games for the range and games for the golf course. And we spoke to the students and we let them know champions are made when no one is looking. It's relatively straightforward to come to core, put in a good effort in front of the coaches, implement spacing, variability and challenge, implement pre-shot routines, think about how you're going to deal with adversity, do your round reviews. That's good. That's solid core standard behaviors. That's what we want from our students. But the real ones that kick on and go and play college at the, at the best level they can, the ones that really develop those habits of excellence, what do they do when there's no coach looking? Can they go into their coach now, access this ebook, download a scorecard, and play a game? Can they put spacing? Can they put variability? Can they put challenge into their practice when there's no one over their shoulder and watching them? And that's something that we'll be encouraging them to do. Myself um, and the coaches, we will post this into the students' coach nows so they have this option to follow some core style practices even when they're not at core golf. And then there's some other eBooks that are available online, as, as you guys know, um, to help parents uh, understand uh, some of this. Uh, there'll, there'll be a nice compliment to this video. Um, so let's quickly watch a game. Here we can see a student is playing three games at once. So we would call this interleaving. So we have game one, shot one. That's what the student has just done. Now we're about to see game two, shot one. Then the student's going to move to game three, shot one. So he's playing three different games. Each game has nine points available. Once he's completed shot one of game three, he's going to go back to game one and he's going to hit shot two of game one. And he's going to repeat this process, playing these three games, but he's not playing game one, game two, game three, all out. One learning trial from game one, one learning trial from game two, one learning trial from game three, one learning trial from game one, one learning trial from game two, one learning trial from game three. Going all the way around until all three games are finished, 
And this creates a lot more spacing, variability, and challenge. This makes practice a lot more representative of golf and is likely to lead to skill transfer. If you play these games, just game one on its own, game two on its own, and then game three on its own, if you play each game in isolation, the chance of that transferring to the golf course and golf competition is lower. So a key term here is interleaving, and this is what we're teaching the students, and this is a big part of the practices that we design. This is called serial practice. So this is where you make a predetermined order. And it's very good if that order is the same as it would be on the golf course. So here we have a game where they hit a driver into a fairway, an iron inside a certain target, and then they have to hold this putt. If you do all three in a row, you get to go to the next box. If you do not, you have to make a chip up and down before you're allowed back into the game. Can you get through all four boxes in one hour? Again, a great game, and we would play a lot of similar games uh, to this at core. Finally, uh, on-course games. So this is a video that, that I created a while back. This is called constraints-led learning. So thinking about the desired behaviors that coaches want students to have and then designing a game where the rules of the game draw out those desired behaviors. One of the hardest things to teach a junior golfer is course strategy. And here we can see this is a video that uh, highlights a game where the rules enforce students to play with a good strategic mindset. So this is called constraints-led learning. And this is something that we do a lot of the time uh, when we visit Sassamon or Sandy Burr. On-course challenge, the eliminator. During this on-course task, a player will choose the side of the hole they want to eliminate for the tee shot. In this instance, the player has chosen to eliminate the left side. Any ball that lands to the left of the fairway will be given a two-stroke penalty. The player will then play an approach shot, selecting which side of the flag they want to eliminate. In this instance, the player has chosen to eliminate the right side of the flag. Any ball that lands to the right side of the flag will be given a two-stroke penalty. Once the approach shot has been hit, the player should continue to play as normal from around the green attempting to shoot the lowest score that they can. So ultimately, when a child is at poor golf and we are trying to help them become the best golfer they can be, our practices are organized mess or systematic chaos. They're very, very well thought out. They're designed with spacing, variability, and challenge in mind. They're designed in line with what we believe the kids' needs are. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to have the kids get their reps in, but without repetition. To forget is to remember. So you might hit two or three of this shot, then you've got to go and do two or three of something else. And then when you come back, you re-engage your brain. And now... What that's doing, you're getting full reps of hitting the shot. Just hitting the ball, hit, hit, that is not a rep. That is a part rep. A rep for a golf shot requires pre-shot analysis. It requires some form of mathematics on the wind and the, and the lie and how much you're going to take off, how much you're going to add on. It requires target selection. And after you've done all that analysis, it involves some form of visualization, see, feel, hear. And then we hit the shot. And if we're doing that with some form of outcome pressure, stress, or some level of predetermined engagement, that's going to echo what we're going to do on the golf course. And then finally, a full rep involves accepting the outcome, learning from it, and going back and repeating this process. So we are encouraging students to practice in a more effective environment. One, 
that leads to skill retention and skill transfer, and one that actually forces them to engage in the full rep of hitting a shot, not just the part rep of hitting the ball. There has to be analysis. There has to be visualization. There has to be some form of reflection on the shot for it to count as a full rep. Um, so I hope that gives you an insight into um, what we talked about uh, this this week. Um, I think it's very important um, because some students will come with predetermined ideas that just repping after repping after repping, hitting ball, hitting ball will lead to muscle memory. And if they can perfect their swing through muscle memory, then they can go and play great golf. And that is simply not the case. Uh, rep after rep after rep does not lead to long-term learning. It does not lead to retention and transfer of skill. And actually what it probably leads to is injury, burnout, and frustration. So by getting ahead of the curve with the students and educating them on this and having them design practices and involving them in this process, I think we can shift some of their core beliefs uh, and have them engage in this and understanding that just beating balls uh, is not a success formula. Um, the one time you may not want to practice like this is in the lead up to a tournament, probably two to three days out from a tournament. Students should be reducing the cognitive load or the stress that they face in practice. And then it's probably okay to, to clip a few balls, hit a few putts, go through a process that is there to help them relax, help them be confident, uh, and save units of mental energy ready for the tournament. Um, so hope that's a, a nice review for everybody. Um, as I mentioned, uh, as well as next week being a test, um, and then there being a, a pizza party on the final week, there's no need for any more Zoom reviews. So this will be the final one. So appreciate everyone uh, tuning in. Uh, and have a great evening. Uh, and I'm really excited to get outside with the students from the 1st of April uh, and see them apply these behaviors that they've been focused on and, and learning in the classroom. Thank you.